Everybody, welcome back to another episode of FSI DFS Fantasy NASCAR Truck Series. I'm your host, Mike Ruler31. And this is another case where we don't have actual starting positions or um, anything. Recording this at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning on the East Coast. Uh, practice and qualifying for the Kansas race are going to be at noon today and the race is at 8 o'clock. Weather's not going to be an issue. It's going to be like 80, 90 degrees there, like maybe 84 at the start of the race. It should be a, a, something for once we don't have to worry about anything although it's gonna be much hotter during practice and qualifying than it probably is going to be the night race so i mean looking at um practice and and qualifying data um the teams are going to have to adjust to like when the sun goes down and the lights come up and the track changing so this is a, a speculation race i took um data from kansas races in the past vegas races because it's a it's a similar track style um current form in um truck series or cup series or arca wherever these drivers are running because we do have two um cup series guys in here Kurt bush is here and so is ross chastain and um we do have some arca people coming up with uh tony um brenninger making her debut in the number one uh, tricon garage truck so if you want the actual um sheet and stuff it's it's super easy um, go to the description of the video, go to FSI DFS. Uh, if you sign up for the weekly package and, and here's the tip, it's when we say weekly package, it's actually physically a week. It's not just going to be the two ways races for this weekend. So if you sign up for, it's only $5, so it's not that expensive. So if you sign up for it after 1 30 PM today, um, eventually, you know, in this e the evening, I'll have the sheet updated with all the, um, correct projections and all the correct plays and and everything there you will get this race you'll get the cup race and then it'll wrap around the next week is same thing next friday the trucks are at darlington it's same day practice and qualifying so i might get a speculation video out but if not you know you'll have all the accurate sheet for that too and then it'll carry over to um over the Xfinity race, which starts at 1.30 on that Saturday. So if you subscribe after 1.30 today, then it will cover at least four races for you. And if you get in the Discord and everything on Mother's Day for the Cup race, if you still need help for that one, I will. Um, I can post in the, the general chat for the Discord for FSI, which everybody can see, even if um, your um, NASCAR expires. So for $5, I'm going to give you five races of information, two of which I can't do a video for accurately because the information won't be out till right before um, the race. It's even tighter window for Darlington. I think the trucks qualify at like three o'clock and then the race is at eight o'clock at night. So, I mean, it's cool to have night races, but it's kind of hard to be able to do a video in between and get everything figured out and produced. So that's the value of getting into the discord. So I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just telling you that if you want the most accurate information, it's only $5. It's not that expensive. I think the whole month is like $10. So, I mean, we're really, really cheap. So anyways, let's get into this. So what I did was I took their data from, like I said, Kansas 22, Kansas 21, Vegas 23, Vegas 22, similar intermediate tracks with um, the same like shape, banking, tire wear, things like that. Um, looked at their track history here, their current form, and I adjusted starting position by their average starting position this um, season. So again, this is all speculation, uh, but the three speculation videos we've done so far this season, we've actually hit on some really good plays that actually um, worked out and guys that we thought that would qualify or girls that we thought would qualify low, drivers, we'll just call them, um, actually worked out that way and people that we didn't think were going to make um, the cut. But I believe everybody should qualify for this one. I think there's only 36 trucks in the field and they should take them all. So Kyle Busch, um, all the numbers say they should be able to get the pole here. Um, if he doesn't, that's um, probably makes him even stronger play. I don't have him listed as a prime play because 1300 is hard to get into in cash. The further on down he starts, the better a play is because there's going to be some place differential baked in. But you really need him to go out and dominate and lead a bunch of laps, which, you know, at Kansas last year, he was had a 2.9 average running position in Vegas um, the last two years. Like So he, he's done really, really well at these types of tracks. In truck racing, he's had three wins here, five top tens, led a bunch of laps in six races. 
So everything points to him being a, a great play. It's just your decision. If you want to play the 1300 for him, or if you think he's going to not pay off his price tag, what can you get for the money you would have spent on him? That's, and that's the question. So uh, definitely in cash play. Majeski might be another decent pivot. Um, he, I have him finishing fourth, started second, been strong in the store sport truck. And Zane Smith is probably the best non-ringer um, in, in the Cup Series. So, you know, he's another great option. Ran really well at Kansas here last year. Um, did good at Vegas. So, um you know, five top five, five top tens in six races, led 214 laps. So a lot of positive things um, for uh, Zane Smith also. Eckes, I think, is a decent cash play, too. Again, it's going to depend on where he qualifies. Number one here, but in six races, he's been five of them in the top ten. His average finish is 6.7. So I think that definitely makes um, him a strong cash play. Of course, the further on down that he starts that's just going to make him better i'm going to actually put him in purple because you know just at his price point this is just somebody to um kind of just note here and to uh to remember as somebody that's a little too dark but i'm just going to highlight some people as we talk about i'll put him in blue here um that could be a potentially good play nick sanchez could also uh start out the season okay had a run where he finished second and seventh ran really good led a bunch of laps um then we got into some of the goofier races like talladega the dirt race things like that uh so vegas he didn't do as well but I, so i have him as a, a gpp at nine three because they've really priced him up compared to um what he has done but if he starts further on down and he looks good in like practice then i think he's definitely in play here because this his average on the tracks is um 10 5.10 really like Corey heim here at tricon garage um has him with the third highest uh projection uh based on the track average he's run two races here only finished one in the top 10 um you know, finished in the twenties, but just looking at his average running position at Kansas and Vegas and other uh, similar tracks and um, his current form, I, I think he definitely is a solid cash play. Josevar, he has his win now, so that could really change his strategy. So he, he probably locked into the playoffs, really struggled at Kansas in 21 and uh, 22 was better. Um, Vegas was okay. Um I just look at his average finish here in three races is 13th with one top five. Um, so I, I think at 81, the price isn't bad. And again, it's all going to have to be where he starts. So I keep him in mind, but I think he's more of a GPP play today. Ben Rhodes, I think is going to be a solid cash play. Uh, however, um, you know, he's just been really good here um, in 10 races, uh, five top tens, average finish is 12th. That's a little bit disappointing if you're paying 10 to he's going to be one that you considered based on where he starts as a pivot off of uh kyle bush i mean can you get kyle bush and 10k guy in the lineup yes it all depends on what value um comes up but there's a lot of the, in this truck series there's a lot of low price people but they're pretty scary i don't know if their equipment's going to make it it's not like it's a short track where they're going to continue to get lapped but they do have a uh, potential for some of these trucks not to uh, make it too far into the race and potentially break down not like the cup series where they're all the same uh, equipment. Uh, so Chase Purdy, I think is a decent option here as a GPP. Also 17th overall finish in five races, only one top 10, not good at the first uh, Kansas race, 13th, um, 10th in Vegas. So again, it's a Kyle Busch truck. And usually when the boss is driving that the employees also do well at the track because they, probably use similar setups and the information that Kyle gives them about the truck, I think pass on to the other teams to help them out. So definitely in play, but I think more of a GPP. Uh, Grant Emfringer and Matt Crafton, like both these guys in cash. Well, Crafton's race here forever, like 25 races, three wins, 14 top tens, um, 11 overall finish. So, you know, if he starts in the top 15, anyway, 10 to 15, I think it's a really good play at, at 9K. Um and figure has had a little bit better results in nine races with um seems like a better finishing 
percentage and uh, place at like six. So I like both these guys. Like I like the $500 discount on Crafton. Like Effinger, again, they're kind of priced in no man's land here in the 9K range of playing Cody Kyle Bush, but you might be able to get one of them in. Stuart Fries in the GPP has not been having a great year this year. His average finish at this track in eight races is 19th. So I don't know if I'm going to play a lot of Stuart Fries unless he starts like dead last or something or has like a blows a tire out in qualifying and starts like 30th. Uh, Tanner Gray, I think is another GPP average finish 18th. Um, if he starts 20th, if he starts below what his average um, finishes, I'm okay with him. But other than that, uh, I think there's better guys in the 8K range. Ross Chessane, I think he'll have a lot of ownership. I think people pay him sometimes as a pivot off of Kyle Busch, especially if he starts further in the back. But he's had a pretty disappointing season in the truck series this year. He's been um, 18th overall finish. And then at this uh, track specifically in the truck race, he does have one win in two top tens in five races, but his average finish is 17th with a 40% DNF rate at Kansas. So um, it's a nice truck. I, I do worry a little bit about the, um, it making it through the whole race. It's not like a garbage truck, but it, it's more like one of the medium range ones. It's not like elite equipment. So Ross Chessane, I don't think maybe I'll have him in one lineup just in case, but I don't think I'll be playing a ton of them. Anchor um, 21st overall, no top tens here. 28% DNF rate, uh, GPP Taylor gray, Tricon garage, um, 17th overall finish not too much data at this track so it's more just looking at his truck racing overall for the season so again if, if he starts anywhere below 20th i think i consider him at 76 but again it, the, it's just a context play Haley deegan um was terrible at vegas in 22 not great in 23 at this kansas track uh four races a 17th so that tells me that um if she starts 15th on back i think i'd consider her uh but you know it's all depends on if she's going to be a place differential play or not i don't think if she qualifies anything higher than uh 15th then, then she's going to be a fade for me matt de benedetto could be a decent um cash play here at 83 if you can get him in your lineup uh two races here one top 10 nine overall um average finish so He's done well, did well here in the Cup Series also. So 12th in Vegas. So again, it all depends on if he starts in um, the top 10. I don't know if I play him unless I, he gets the pull and looks really fast. And you think that he could be a dominator in this race. But other than that, I think, you know, he's in play for cash. I think it will be a place differential play. He's His average start position has been like 18th. So if he can go from 18th like up to 9th, that's almost 10 to place differential points at 8,300. I really like that. Uh, Raha Kruth, um, you know, he's been between Xfinity and Truck Series as a young driver here. We're looking, at, he's had one race here. He finished 29th. So can't really go by that, but I he's been erratic. So I have to put him as GPP. Jake Garcia is an ARCA guy that's raced a little bit in the truck series. I have him as a prime play. He protects really well here. Uh, he did run Vegas. He ran 13th. Um, he has one top 10 here at this race. Uh, so in Kansas, I think he ran here in truck last year. No, he didn't because he didn't have a number here. But um, I probably pulled up like similar track or ARCA data for him. So, But anyways, he's another good young driver that has a lot of talent and potential. Not the best equipment i definitely like sanchez's equipment better than his but again i think that he could be a prime play at 7800 depending on his starting position if he starts anywhere in 20th on back i think i'll be playing him because um yeah i built a lineup with kyle bush and he's one of the pieces that fit in nicely tony brenninger like you said she come up from arca she's a very talented up and coming driver. She's not um, like a model that they put into race just to sell tickets and, and get people excited about racing. She actually has some talent. I really like the truck that she's in. Uh, ironically, it's the one and that's the number that Haley Deegan started with before um, they all the teams changed like um, manufacturers and she ended up in the um, Thor Sports uh, truck, the 13. So it's, um, she'll be here in the number one uh, truck. Tricon Garage is a, is a decent program, decent truck at 4,700. If she starts like 20th on back, I think that she can finish in the top 25. And at 4,700, one of the cheapest plays in good equipment, 
I think she's uh, definitely um, a decent driver. And I think she'll, I mean, watch practice and qualifying. If she's really struggling with the truck and adjusting to it, then maybe there's an issue. Um, then maybe she'd be a fade, but at 4,700, you really can't lose much. And again, 20th on back, 25th on back, then I think that's just absolute gold. Uh, Lala Salen, again, depends on where he starts, GPP, 25th overall. So, you know, if he's starting 25th on back, then I think, you know, he could use one of those value plays at GPP. Brett Holmes, average finish 22nd. So, Again, I, th I think just kind of match up where their average finish is to where their starting position is if you're looking for a value. Dean Thompson, Tricon Garage has a little bit, he's probably the best out of the three here between Allen, Holmes, and, and Thompson with equipment and, and team. And um, just looking at overall, uh, Thompson has the best composite score on the tracks like this. Colby Howard and Johnny Sauter, I really like these two. Um, they are in you know, medium to lower end trucks, but these trucks have been pretty solid. Johnny Sauters has so much experience, 15 races here, one win, six uh, top fives. And, and again, they, they were in better trucks here, but 11th overall finish. I just looked at like all his history at Kansas and he's been, been good. And I know he hasn't raced in a while, but he was here in Kansas and in, um, in 21 had 12th, 10th overall, um, for tra composite track and eight if you overall with all the trucks if you look at everything i think at ak if you can get in his lineup like if he starts um anywhere from 15th on back i think um solder is like an amazing play so that's why i have him as prime same thing with colby howard he's been very solid also if i throw out vegas 22 um you know he's two races here one top 10 10 overall finish so both races that he's he's finished in the top 15 so i think you know colby howard is somebody to definitely uh look at here at 7200 as a good building block so between again you have to take in context but if garcia howard and Sauter all start 20th or below then i'm locking them in as my prime place and that's gonna be able to get me kyle bush in if i want to or some of these other 10k guys and, and build a solid lineup um if they don't, then we'll have to look at some of the other um, plays to to make up for them. Uh, Daniel died GPP. He's, he's wrecked a lot. Uh, hasn't really raced at this racetrack in Vegas. He was 22nd. So, um, again, it all depends on where he starts. Boyd's a fade for me. He truck breaks down a lot. Chris Wright's decent, but he, his ceiling is probably about 25th. So, you know, if he starts below 25th and you need a value play, then I'm fine with that. If he's anywhere above 25th, um, you know, I prefer him. If he's starting like 30th or something, he'd probably be a really good play. Josh Ryum is usually a fade, but he's in the AM racing truck, which is like the Brett Moffitt uh, team. Really hasn't raced good, but I think his his numbers are based more on the equipment that he's had. So I think he could be sneaky here at 4,800. So I'm going to give him a blue also as like a name just to kind of write down and just to see where he starts and how he looks in practice and qualifying because he's somebody that I'm definitely going to keep my eye on. Mason Maggio is really hasn't raced too much um, in the truck series. One race here at 30 seconds. So again, uh, Rayum brother, this is the truck that usually rate Josh Rayum drives. So, and like I said, the equipment really has been great. So I'm not excited. Tyler Hill, usually in decent equipment, this Hill Motorsports, it all just depends on where he starts. Um, four races, uh, 20th overall finish. So not going to be a top 10 guy, but if he starts 20th there on back at 6K, he might be a decent value for you. Uh, Timothy Veen's in the Glory of God truck. I mean, he's actually a part owner of this truck, and it actually this truck looks like it's going to be a Ford and not one of the Toyotas, so I don't know what's up with that. Maybe they wrecked all the Toyotas, and they only have Fords left. To, they're like secondhand trucks. Like, they originally bought from Kyle Busch, but pretty much it was probably just like the body, and it seems like all the tech and everything was stripped out because these trucks have been painfully slow. So don't expect much out of Tim Veen's if he starts last. Nick Lentz is an ARCA guy. It's coming up in Young's Motorsports. I think he's a GPP, but he just really hasn't fared well in um, anything that he has done other than ARCA. Justin S. Carroll is on his own team. He, he has not yet qualified for a race anytime he's ever tried. So um, you know, the 14th overall is from like ARCA races and some other like different other series. So um, 
you know, he he's he could be a sleeper here, but we don't know what this truck can do because again, it hasn't been fast enough to qualify. But some of them were like where they went to the track and there's rain or weather and they did the formula and didn't have enough points because they're a brand new team, like a family owned team. So hopefully, you know, I, I like I cheer for these, like would Brandon built and for like um, you know, Clements racing and, and the ones that are like single teams trying to make it with the, the family. So uh again, we'll just have to see like what happens to practice and qualifying. For that, if the truck actually looks like it has some decent speed and can contend, F4600 might be in play for, you know, if you're trying to play like a crazy like Chastain uh, Bush lineup. But again, I think you're going to get what you pay for. If um if the truck looks slow, uh, it might be finishing down here with like the Glory to God trucks. And Brandon Poole is probably is a good driver in these trucks. And it's kind of interesting. He and Ross Chastain after the cup series, um, you know, this, this pool accidentally wrecked Chastain, although, you know, some of the video evidence looked like that bread and pool lift and Chastain just ran into the back of him because he didn't expect him to do that. But whatever happened, I don't think it's going to spill over here. It's just an interesting narrative just to bring up and mention, but um, you know, pool can sometimes be surprising. He's not a bad driver. If you look at three races at Kansas, his average finish is 19.3. The equipment's not great, but he, has overperformed in the equipment so um again maybe he's another one i 50 it's a little bit high to pay for him i think you're paying for like the driver and not the truck here but somebody else to keep in mind so again like some of my favorite plays here are garcia howard and Sauter. keep your eye on akis rayum and pool um sanchez also and then you know kyle bush and chastain are probably going to be the most popular guys here and then everybody else is just going to be based on where they qualify. And uh, again, I can Tony Brenninger at 4,600 and really good equipment um, with a lot of potential could be another sleeper play. So that's what I got for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the chat below. Just remember, I can't approve full lineups. So please don't post like I'm going to play these six guys. Do you like it? Because we can't do that. If you have a question of like two people, then that's perfectly fine. We can do that. Um, should be back tonight or tomorrow morning for the cup race, um, but we will have practice and qualifying for that. So I'll have an accurate sheet for you for that. So I appreciate you watching. If these videos help you, then please help us back. Like, subscribe to our channel, uh, share with your friends. And as, like I said, if you want more information on FSI DFS and you want to sign up for our package so you can have the accurate information for the truck race, subscribe after 1.30 p.m. So it will take you through and cover four races. Races. Like I said, anybody that comes in, I will make sure that you have the cup information for next week also. So that will be five races. That will be the truck race tonight at Kansas, the cup race tomorrow at Kansas, and then Darlington next week, the truck Xfinity and cup race all for $5. So um, very, very low price for you. So I appreciate you watching. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, good luck in your contest. I'll see you next